Alright, I'm going to cover some stuff I didn't before with the custom palette, uh, layers, pages, and paint functions. So, to get the custom palette, go to Window, go to Custom Palette, we'll turn it on. If you want to add a quick, if you want to add a asset tab, go to New Set. You can also delete it by going to Delete Current Set. It will delete the tab you have selected. You can double click it to rename it. I'm going to name it Custom Set. If you want to add a color, you click on this plus color button. So I can add black. I'm going to add white. I'm going to add uh, red. And I'll add blue. So I have some colors now. So I can add some brushes too. I'll go ahead and add uh, some basic ones. Uh, paint brush here. Size 20 is okay, I guess. Click on the tool one. You can add it as the type of brush that it is, or you can make it into a custom brush. If you leave it as the type that it is, you'll keep the menu and you can quickly change between different types of similar brushes, as well as whatever other settings for that brush there are. So I'll do that and I'll also make it a, a 40. Go ahead and uh, hit OK. Do it again. And I'll show one more as a custom brush or whatever. Custom brush is going to show as the little squiggle across the screen. It's going to look the same as it normally would, except uh, now I can go ahead and fiddle with all these other settings like roundness. It gives you more control, but over the stroke, but you can't as easily edit all those other settings that you could before. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. If you want to delete one, go ahead and double click and hit delete. If you edit the stroke and uh, you want to save the settings, like if I want to turn this down to a 30, I can click on the little blue circle arrow. It's going to save that. Uh, if you accidentally do it, it kind of sucks, so keep it in mind. Now it's a 30, so I want to turn it back to a 40. Can click on it again, it will change it. Now it's a 40. It's going to stay a 40. That's pretty much how it works. There's not much else to, to that. Of course, you can move this around and you can change the orientation of the toolbar by by moving those arrows. If you move it to the middle of the screen, it won't tweak out too much, but if you try to do it down here, it's going to be a little sensitive, so. You know, keep that in mind. At least on the PC version. Uh, don't do Mac. Do often. Okay, the layers. I'll go ahead and delete the vector layer. Not going to be working with that today. Didn't mean to make a paint mask. Okay. Gonna do one blue, one red to uh, demonstrate here. So I got my blue uh, paintbrush here. Yeah, paint with the mouse, cause uh, yep, not gonna pull out the tablet. Okay. So that's the blue layer. That's the red layer. Now. If you merge layers, or you can select layers. If you hold Control, lets you uh, select and unselect layers. Just click on where the name is. If you hold Shift, you can select a bunch based off where you first click and last click on the layer list. If you select layers by holding Control or Shift or whatever, and then left click and hold, you get the radial menu. You can merge selected into one layer. If you merge two vector layers, you get a vector layer. Two paint layers, you get a paint layer. And if you merge a vector and a paint, you get a paint. So uh, if you're merging vectors, you should probably either duplicate the layer before you merge it into a paint or uh, copy it and paste it somehow to preserve your vectors for later in case you want to make changes. Or just use guides and draw on the guides in the paint layer. 
You can duplicate a layer, which will always preserve the layer uh, identically. If you merge visible, it's going to merge all the layers uh, that are visible into one layer. And then you can also clear layers, which will just delete everything on the layer. And then you can make new layers from this menu. Now, uh, if you have special effects on layers, like uh, transparency and stuff, I'll only toggle it on one here. I'll do it on the blue layer. And you want to copy. Whoops. Yeah, I'll go ahead and copy these two letters here. If I copy these and I make a new a new layer and I paste these, it's going to be full transparency. If you want to have that uh, not happen, you need to go to Preserve Layer Attributes, which is in the uh, Edit menu. Now it should uh, should paste properly. Turn these off. Too many layers. Oh my gosh. Anyways, now it now it will preserve the layer as it was. So it will also do that with symmetry effects and stuff. So uh, pay attention to whether that's enabled or not. You could also just duplicate the layer, and it will it will uh, copy the settings of the layer, but it won't give you the effect copied onto a layer with 100%. So, anyways, okay. Gonna delete this now because I think this is the one. that I don't need any of these anymore paint layer deselect this okay if I go to uh, make a shape here I got a circle make another circle on the other layer the tools all have multiple sampling in this program, so if I use solid fill, I'll go ahead and fill, uh, if I do blue, and I have sample all layers, which is probably selected by default, it's going to look at all the layers, and it sees this shape here, which is on a different layer than this shape, but it treats this as one image, so it it sees the, the border here. Now if you don't want that to happen, you need to uh, turn off sample all layers in the tool. And now it will ignore that shape and it will just fill that area. You can also do that with the selection tools, uh, with the magic wand gonna select the whole red shape if I delete it now. And turn up the tolerance a bit because it's not quite selecting a lot. It's going to uh, intersect with the red shape if I have sample all layers if I turn it off going to uh, ignore it now. Anyways, uh, that's the basic idea. Gonna clear all these. Make new shapes. That's way too small. Okay, uh, this should work. If I use a solid fill now, you're going to want to probably use tolerance. I don't think bleed edges is, sick, is on by default, but without bleed edges, it's just going to do one area. So if I undo that and I turn bleed edges on, 
And I turn tolerance to like half. It's going to fill a greater area. If I turn it up all the way, it should fill more. If I turn it down, it should fill less. But the way the tools work, I gotta like do something else. That filled almost nothing, so with a 20, it's gonna fill. Very small area. Yeah, that's basically all uh, Lead Edges does. Okay. And if you use these tools in the uh, paint layer and you don't select the whole layer, it's going to make holes. Obviously. Just keep that in mind. So if I were to warp just a piece here, it's going to make a hole behind it. Um, there's another feature in these tools. Go ahead and write something here. It's called uh, the transparency lock. If I turn transparency lock on, you can see this is my transparency if I turn the canvas off. Um, everything checkerboard is transparent. It won't let me paint on what's transparent, so if I go ahead and go back to the solid brush and I pick blue now, it's not going to let me paint out here. I can only paint inside, so it just masks the transparency. If I turn it back on, I can paint outside. So instead of having to make a mask, you have multiple layers and they're all transparent behind. You don't have to worry about making masks each time. Just go ahead and turn on the uh, transparency lock, and you'll be restricted to your layer and your transparency. So that should save some time. And then, uh, of course, there's these tools. I don't know if I covered them, but they're mostly for photo editing. There's the uh, dodge tool. I don't think I can show it very well with this uh, image. Yes, clear this. I need like a gradient or something. It, it just brightens an area, so uh, the dodge tool is going to darken. Darken an area that the. Uh, sorry, the. Um, the burn brush is going to darken an area, the dodge tool is going to make it brighter. If you have like a 2D image or a portrait and you want to add highlight effects to it or make it look more 3D and simulate lighting, use these tools. And then blur eh, is going to make stuff more blurry, sharpen is going to sharpen it. It's probably easier to tell with like this pattern, pattern tool. Oh my gosh. Killing me. Okay, yeah. Anyways, simple tools. The page uh, manager pretty useful if you're working on like a large document with lots of layers and you want to make a change and you don't want to have to keep copying all the layers to uh, make sure that you have a backup or save the file just make a new page and duplicate it it will make a copy of your document so if I want to uh, just click on the middle duplicate the page it will, it will copy your whole document so I could call this like uh, Say I make a change on uh, this layer here. Obviously this would be like a complicated illustration, right? And I made some big change to it. And later I came back and noticed I, I deleted some major feature in the layer I didn't notice. I still have a backup here I could go back to and I could, uh, I could fix it up. So. You could do that rather than save your document a ton of times. Uh, 
that's basically what it's for. You could also make uh, other uses from it, but you can move the pages. You can uh, change the preview. And uh, yep, that's about it. I don't think there's many other things I forgot to cover. Uh, I guess the masks and selection tool here, I can go over really quick. You can uh, let me close these. You can make selections into masks. So if I were to um, something's up here. What's going on? Oh gosh, take me a year. All right. Whatever, I've got this. Uh, go ahead and wand it. Everything that's blue is going to be turned into a mask if I were to click Convert Mask because that's outside my selection. Inside my selection is uh, inside the marching ants. So if I were to convert this, there's my mask, right? If I click the eye tool, the mask remains active, but uh, outside the mask, it just hides it hides the red area. So uh, if I paint, right? If I paint, I don't know if I can paint. Uh, I'm special, special ed right now. There we go. If I paint, uh, I'm restricted to the mask. But you can also use masks to save selections. So I could also uh, I could also just go to my mask and I could click on the mask and the wand, and I'll I'll have my selection back. So you don't have to just use masks for uh, whatever their intended purpose is. You could use it to save selections. I could, uh, could do that. And that's about it. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, go ahead and leave comments. Sorry, it's like uh, 1 a.m., so a little bit tired. Later.